Okay, so today I'm going to talk about a mistake, something that you need to check to ensure that you are not doing. Now, one of the things I've been doing more recently on the channel is I've been giving you lots of impact drills and lots of exercises for rotation. And what I've basically been saying is, look guys, the better that you rotate through the ball, the more stable this club can stay, and then you can start playing around. If my body's more open, then you can start playing around with wrist positions, okay, and, and getting the feeling of flattening that lead wrist, which again will help you square that club face. And the response in the comments has been great. Loads of golfers have been working on this stuff or are excited to be working on this stuff. And with a couple of recent golf lessons that I've been doing, I've obviously been trying to preach this same method. You know, I'm trying to get students of mine to get the feeling of being more open and then they can work on these sort of feelings of flattening these wrist positions. Now, what I mean by flattening the wrist position is you've got options, okay? But at some stage, what needs to happen is when I hit the golf ball, because my shoulders will be more open than they were at address, my lead shoulder is going to be further away from its original position, which will flatten the wrist. But what can also happen is I'm, a hap I'm happy for golfers to accentuate this feeling of the hands going further forward. And if the hands go further forward, so they go further forward of the club head, then this will produce an element of flexion. Now, what we've then been experimenting with is conversation as to when you can start to flex. And I, you know, personally speaking, I'm the kind of golfer who will take it straight back and then tend to have more of a feeling of flexing at the top, which I'll talk about in more detail on a video upcoming. But you've got options. We see some tour pros who flex it in the takeaway. We see some tour pros that flex it at the top of the backswing. We see some tour pros that swing back with a conventional wrist position and then flatten it. And we see some tour pros that hold on to the original wrist position until the very late downswing. So you have options. But with some of my students and with some of the people that are vis visiting for lessons, what they've noticed is that when they're doing these wrist positions and trying to change these sort of impact areas, they've been finding it uncomfortable and they've been sort of noticing and getting a bit of ache and a bit of tension. And this is where I think grip pressure would come into it. It's not something I've really ever talked about in huge detail on the channel. And the reason for this is I'm not 100% sure exactly what your grip pressure should be because we don't really have any hard evidence exactly how tight the golf pros grip it. Now, personally speaking, I don't massively believe in some of the old stories of holding it like an egg or holding it like a baby bird. I think you have to take more control of it than that. And I personally think that when the golf club is moving quite fast to the side of the body, I actually think there will be a bit more talking going on in the fingers as it sort of holds onto the club and tries to square the face. So if I was going to grip it really tight and then sort of relax to a zero, I would say I'd probably be six and a half to seven out of ten in terms of my grip pressure so it's not like i'm sort of holding it really limp i'm still holding it with an element of control but what i'm definitely not doing is strangling it so i think if you sort of a good way of sort of testing is if you sort of hold the club out in front of you and then you sort of produce this type of motion here which is just a flexing of the lead wrist and obviously a hinging action on the back of the right wrist i think you need to be able to do that so that you don't get too much activation and anything too uncomfortable in the forearms I think if you grip it tighter you start to notice you get more of an ache and a pain there and then therefore relax it so it gives you a little bit more freedom to be able to produce these type of motions and I think that would be a really good tip because if you grip it really tight, one, it can potentially restrict what you're able to do, but two, you're going to risk potential injury um, if you're kind of strangling the club when you're trying to work on it. So one of my favorite drills I did recently, which I'm going to reiterate in this video, is you get set up, you hinge, okay? So you're going to do it so it feels comfortable, so you're not like tensing and strangling the club. And then you're going to advance that club a little further, and then you're just going to rotate through the ball trying to hold on to those angles. And I personally think this is just an excellent exercise to get the feeling of wrists, but also the rotation that is necessary. Because as I said in a recent video, you can only hold on to these wrist conditions you're presetting if your shoulders and your hips are open and you found a way to get slightly lower to the back of the golf ball. So if you're somebody who has more of a tendency to stand up, you are never going to be able to hit the ball with this type of exercise. So. Don't strangle it, relax it, but not too much that you feel like you're gonna let go of it, okay? And it's okay for your fingers to feel like they're taking hold of the club as well a little bit. And then just practice hinging, back, rotation. I think that's a really, really good exercise, which is having good, really good results with a lot of my online students as well. 
Think about your grip pressure. Think about the tension in your forearms. See you guys again really soon.